There are a number of exceptions when we deal with the octet rule, and we're going to go through each one of those so that you can be successful when you're drawing Lewis structures. The first exception, and probably one of the more important ones, is hydrogen. Hydrogen has one valence electron. In fact, it only has one electron. To complete that first energy level, there only need to be two electrons. So hydrogen will bond with itself or other atoms so that it can have two electrons. That's the same configuration as the noble gas helium. Helium is another exception to the octet rule. It has two valence electrons in its outer shell, and that shell is full. If we were to add more electrons to helium for some reason, they would have to go in another shell. So here we have hydrogen forming a chemical bond with chlorine by sharing electrons. The hydrogen has one electron, and it shares that with chlorine, which has seven electrons in its outer shell. Once they form the bond, hydrogen now has two valence electrons, and chlorine has eight, an octet. Moving on to lithium, we have three electrons, but we only have one valence electron in that highest energy level. So lithium will lose that electron in the outer shell, which is now empty and goes away, and we just have lithium with two valence electrons, much like the noble gas helium. We should also put a plus sign up there because lithium's lost a valence electron. It now has a positive charge. In a similar sense, beryllium will lose two electrons in its outer shell, and once they're gone, it has the same configuration as the noble gas helium. Aluminum and boron. Let's look at BH3. Boron has three valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one, so we have six valence electrons. We'll put a pair of electrons between each atom to form chemical bonds. So we've used all six valence electrons. The hydrogens each have two. That means their outer shell or highest energy level is full. And the boron only has six. But boron is an exception to the octet rule. It only needs six. If you check the formal charges, you'll see that this is the best structure for BH3. If we were doing ALH3, we would just have an AL where the B is, and that would be the correct structure for ALH3. We also have what are called expanded octets. These exceptions to the octet rule get a bit complicated, but essentially some of the electrons can hybridize and fill d orbitals. This is possible for elements in the third period, past silicon and below. Let's take a look at an example, PCL5. For PCL5, we have a total of 40 valence electrons. And you can kind of see the problem here already. We have five chlorines that are gonna to bond to the phosphorus, and each one is gonna have a pair of electrons. That would mean 10 valence electrons around the phosphorus. Let's see how this looks. So I form chemical bonds by placing a pair of electrons between each of the atoms. I've used 10 valence electrons. And now I'll go around and use up the remaining electrons. I have 30 left to complete the octets on chlorine. OK, it's a bit busy, but let's see what we have here. We've used all 40 valence electrons. Each chlorine atom has eight valence electrons. It has an octet. And the phosphorus in the center has 10 valence electrons, an expanded octet. This is an exception to the octet rule. If we calculate the formal charges, we'll see that this is the best structure for PCL5. As you move on in chemistry, you'll see that expanded octets are fairly common, and we use them to explain the different resonance forms of Lewis structures. Finally, we'll look at exceptions to the octet rule involving odd electron compounds. These are compounds that, not surprisingly, have an odd number of electrons. You don't see them a whole lot, but they're important exceptions and you should be aware of them. Nitrogen, in particular, is one to watch out for. Let's take a look at nitrogen monoxide. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, oxygen has six, so we only have 11 valence electrons, an odd number. Let's start by putting two valence electrons between the N and the O to form the chemical bond. So we've used two, we have nine left. Let's put electrons around each of the atoms to fill the octet. We've used eight, and now we've used 10, and we only have one valence electron left. Let's just put that on top of the nitrogen. We still have a problem because oxygen has eight, but nitrogen has five, so let's form a double bond. That helps, oxygen still has eight and nitrogen has seven, but we don't have any more valence electrons, and this is the best we're gonna do. 
you can calculate the formal charges to make sure that it's right to put the single electron on nitrogen and not the oxygen. And you'll see that this is the best Lewis structure for nitrogen monoxide. This brings up an important point. When you're dealing with compounds that have odd numbers of electrons or expanded octets, you can always check the formal charges to make sure that you have the best or most likely Lewis structure for that compound. So there you have it, the exceptions to the octet rule. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.